One night, a woman awakens to find her husband missing from their bed. She puts on her robe and goes downstairs to discover him sitting at the kitchen table with a cup of warm hot chocolate. He appears deep in thought, gazing blankly at the wall. Approaching quietly, she notices him wiping a tear from his eye. With a gentle whisper, she asks, What's wrong, dear? Why are you here at this hour? The husband looks up from his drink and reveals, It's the twentieth anniversary of the day we first met. Surprised that he remembered, she tearfully inquires, Can you recall twenty years ago when we began dating? I was just an eighteen-year-old lad, and you were only seventeen. Deeply moved, the wife acknowledges, Yes, I remember. The husband pauses, struggling to find the right words, then continues, Can you recall the time when your father found us in the back seat of my car? She softly responds, Yes, I remember that too, settling down into a chair next to him. Continuing his reminiscence, the husband asks, Can you recall when he pointed that shotgun in my face and said, Either you marry my daughter, or you're off to jail? With a quiet voice, she replies, I remember that as well. Wiping away another tear, he adds, I would have gotten out today. The subway train was incredibly crowded, with passengers tightly squeezed together during the peak rush hour. A woman, feeling particularly cramped, turned around to address the man standing closely behind her. She sternly said, Sir, if you keep poking me with your thing, I promise I'm going to report this to the police. The man, maintaining an air of innocence, responded, oh, uh, I'm not sure what you're referring to, miss. That's merely my paycheck tucked into my pocket. She sounded unconvinced and retorted, Is that so? Well, then you must have an incredibly impressive job, because that's the fifth raise you've had in the last hour. A salesman, peddling bug spray, found himself at a farmhouse, attempting to convince the farmer to purchase his product. Sir, he declared, my bug spray is so potent that you'll never get a bug bite again. I guarantee it. The skeptical farmer proposed a challenge. I'll tie you up in my cornfield without any clothes on, spray you with your bug spray, and if you don't have a single bug bite by morning, I'll buy a whole box of your product. Excited by the opportunity, the salesman agreed. They proceeded to the field, where he undressed, and the farmer sprayed him thoroughly before securing him to a post. The farmer then left him there and returned to his house. The following morning, as promised, the farmer and his family ventured out to the cornfield. True to his word, the salesman remained tied to the post without a single bug bite. However, he appeared disheveled, pale, sleep-deprived, and utterly exhausted. Perplexed, the farmer remarked, Young man, you don't have any bug bites, but you look terrible. What happened to you? With tired red eyes, the salesman weakly responded, Oh, for goodness sake, sir, doesn't that calf have a mother? That a large number of viewers watch my videos without a subscription. Therefore, subscribe to my channel so as not to miss new videos with funny jokes. Tom had been with his wife for an extended period, and although they were happy initially, he started feeling like something was missing from his life. Attempts to discuss his feelings with his wife were met with her constant busyness. One day at work, Tom met Sarah, a new colleague, and they discovered shared interests, quickly becoming close friends. Tom confided in Sarah about his marital issues, finding solace in her understanding and comforting words. They started spending lunch breaks together and exchanged texts regularly. Aware that getting close to another woman was wrong, Tom couldn't resist the strong connection he felt with Sarah. One day, they went for drinks after work, and as the night progressed, Tom found himself drawn to her. However, when things got serious, he pulled away, realizing the gravity of his actions. He confessed to Sarah that he couldn't proceed due to his marriage, and she, understandingly, didn't want to cause trouble. Overwhelmed by guilt, Tom decided to confess his almost infidelity to a priest at church. He admitted to nearly cheating on his wife with another woman. The priest, surprised, emphasized that their actions were akin to committing the act itself. He instructed Tom not to see the woman again and prescribed five prayers and a $50 donation to the poor as penance. Leaving the confession booth with a mix of guilt and relief, Tom followed the priest's instructions, but when it came to putting money in the charity box, he cheekily told the priest, 
I rubbed the $50 on the box, as you said, and that's the same as putting it in. Many years ago, a devoted priest was about to embark on a sacred pilgrimage to the holy city of Rome. Just before his departure, he unexpectedly ran into an old friend from his childhood, a woman named Mary. Overjoyed, the priest exclaimed, Is that truly you, Mary? What an unexpected pleasure! How has life treated you? Mary offered a small, resigned smile, confessing that things had been challenging. She and her husband, Robert, had been praying for a child for over fifteen years, yet remained childless. The priest felt a pang of sorrow for his friend and sincerely expressed his sympathy. He promised Mary that, during his pilgrimage to Rome, he would light a candle for her at the magnificent St. Peter's Basilica, praying for a miracle. Touched by the gesture, Mary thanked him, feeling a glimmer of hope. After exchanging pleasantries and well wishes, they bid each other farewell. With the priest setting off on his journey and Mary returning home. Fast forward five years and the priest was enjoying a quiet dinner at his residence when there was a sudden knock at his door. Surprised, he found Mary's husband Robert standing on his doorstep. Robert shared the incredible news that the candle the priest had promised to light in Rome had worked. Mary and Robert were now parents to two sets of twins, a set of triplets. And to top it off, Mary had just found out she was expecting quadruplets. Overjoyed yet slightly taken aback, the priest exclaimed, My dear Robert, your happiness is my happiness. You didn't need to offer such a generous gift to express your gratitude. However, Robert explained that the ticket to Rome was not a token of gratitude. It was so the priest could make a trip back to Rome and blow out that damn candle. A middle-aged wife had just returned home on a Saturday afternoon after a shopping trip, her usual post-shopping contentment replaced by annoyance. She burst through the door, each step heavier than usual, signaling her distress. Her husband, a man of regular habits, was predictably sprawled on the couch, engrossed in a football game. Without pausing to catch her breath, the wife launched into her story, recounting an unpleasant encounter at the local department store. Seated in the shoe section, surrounded by boxes of various styles and sizes, she had inadvertently shifted into a position that made her lack of undergarments noticeable. To her shock, the shoe salesman had made an offhand and highly inappropriate remark, stating, If that thing was full of ice cream, I'd eat every bite. Offended and embarrassed, she sought solidarity and protective outrage from her husband. However, he seemed to barely register her agitation, offering nothing more than a non-committal grunt without taking his eyes off the screen. Frustrated by his lack of response, she demanded action, raising her voice and insisting that he stand up for her honor. She questioned why he wasn't storming down to the store immediately to confront the salesman. Finally tearing his attention away from the game, her husband met her heated gaze and spoke in a steady voice. He explained his stance, beginning with a sigh. Well, he said, there are three reasons why I won't confront the man. First of all, you didn't need new shoes. You already have more pairs than you can wear, making it an unnecessary shopping trip. Second, you have no business going shopping with no panties on. But most of all, I'm not going to punch anyone who's big enough to eat that much ice cream.